let's go back uh, to our uh, data intelligence dashboard and see how this is working out at the moment in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, remember, this is uh, our data dashboard which looks today at UP very carefully. Uh, the seat matrix is something we showed you a little while ago uh, for Uttar Pradesh. Uh, and that is trying to get that on, on screen at the moment. Yeah, okay, phase one. There we've got it. Uh, phase one is, remember, 10th of February. Seat matrix at the moment in Uttar Pradesh alliance-wise first. As I've been repeating, 53-3-2. 53 was uh, how, what the BJP did. They dominated the phase. But I want to look at urban and semi-urban because here you'll get a sense of why this phase becomes important. There are 11 of 58, so about 20% of the seats are urban, places like Gautam Buddh Nagar, Ghaziabad. The BJP won 10 of them, the Samajwadi Party just won. Then you go to semi-urban seats in and around Aligarh, in and around uh, Mathura, and the BJP again did dominated six to them, one to the SP, BSP. Now, the BSP has been the big letdown uh, in terms of their decline in this part of urban Uttar Pradesh. This was the significant thing. Rural seats, there were 39 rural seats in this area. The BJP won 37 of them. So the BJP's vote where 23 seats, they won by more than 20% cut across the rural and urban divide in this area. And I think that's something that you've got to look at very, very carefully in this election. That was a sweep election is the only way to describe what happened in Uttar Pradesh at that time so this is the map of up and uh, it'll give you we'll have much many more details in a moment on how this is playing out uh, that's that's the good news uh, in a way in terms of trying to analyze this election that we can do this deep dive into data sharat pradhan that's really the question isn't it that the bjp dominated both rural and urban uttar pradesh so the bjp's victory was comprehensive in 2017. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, it is certainly significant and I'm sure the, uh, the, the polarization, Hindu polarization on account of the divide between Jats and Muslims must have been the major reason behind this because this probably never happened in the past. It was unprecedented. And uh, normally BJP, which is seen as a more of a pro-urban uh, uh, tilt that it has and the pro-urban voter is what uh, goes uh, goes behind the BJP. In this case, it has uh, it's really this is this is uh, so certainly an eye opener. But mind you, that is history. That is 2017, and to, there's a much water has flown down the rivers between 2017 and now. Mm -hmm. There was this uh, the the jat factor, the unity between Hindus and Muslims is certainly going to play. And let me also my, uh, uh, tell you, Rajdeep that all this uh, campaign that is being, being built in the name of law and order is largely to overshadow, to, to overwhelm people with this, I would say, half-truth. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you talk of, just as the, the BJP spoken of saying, trying to mm -hmm. uh, defend the party on the issue of uh, uh, Sengar's uh, gang rape, the Hathras gang rape, the uh, Lakimpur firing, they call these stray incidents. It's a shame. On one hand, you talk of law and order, and people cannot forget. You know, the difference is that during Akhlesha's time, yes, the Gundas may be on the run, but in Yogi's time, Gundaism has been state with straight patronage. Mind you, if it was action, they say that action was taken in each of these cases, whether it is Lakimpur, whether it is Hathras, or Unnao. But action came only after they were... Get, let me let me just take that court, you know your high court you know court, you're, you're, you're saying this India was yeah but Chief either way India I just want to see how people on the ground see this Preeti Chaudhary you're there in Aligarh how do the women see this issue of Suraksha there is there are two conflicting issues we get Mahangai and Suraksha there are people who are talking of Mahangai and there are people who are talking of Suraksha one seems to work for the BJP one against it what is what is the average woman on the street saying about Suraksha versus Mangai. You know, Rajdeep, I tend to differ to what uh, Mr. Pradhan said because on the ground, it's not really women. And I have to say it, one of the biggest issues which is echoing and which is seeming to bridge the 
rural urban divide which is so well entrenched in a in a state like uttar pradesh which is the issue of law and order you know whether or not it's actually come down on ground that's debatable you know that's a matter of uh, you know a different conversation entirely but the campaign on which the bjp is going to town on on law and order and suraksha it has trickled down to the lowest common denominator it's something which we have seen echo in the urban belt as well as in the rural belt and what is you know uh, uh, which i need to emphasize on is that it's not just the woman or the woman of uttar pradesh be it the rural woman jat woman you know forget mm -hmm. about caste lines there mm -hmm. who is uh, you know talking about the law and order situation it is sweeping across communities we've had uh, you know jat uh, farmers talk about suraksha i've had you know i've gone to a village where they completely despise the bjp with what has gone down uh, mm -hmm. you know in the farmers agitation they've actually uh, you know stopped bjp from campaigning uh, they've not let the bjp candidate come into their village but they, for them they are like koi aur mudda nahi hai bas ek suraksha ka mudda hai aur ye bahut bada mudda hai par bilkul pasand nahi karte par vote to bjp ko dena padega so there is a you know whether it's come down whether you know incidents like hathras are bigger whether uh, you know there is a sense also uh, which we which we pick up that in this regime uh, you know the gundaism which wasn't there has been institutionalized but those reactions are few and far between largely if i can say uh, this entire election the crucible the fulcrum of it if there is one big issue you know i i don't want to really put my neck out on this but more than anything else at least that we have seen the biggest issue is law and order interesting that you know because this in a way reminds me of bihar 2010 If you saw Bihar 2010, one of the biggest factors that went in favor of Nitish Kumar at the time was law and order. That women could go out on the streets post 6 p.m. and that worked heavily in favor of Nitish Kumar. Will it work for an Yo Yogi Adityanath? Uh, you know, Shruti Vichwas, you were saying that uh, you were citing Hathras again and again, and Congress keeps referring to Hathras, refers to Lakhimpur case. These are terrible. What happened? Nobody doubts that. But on an average day-to-day -day basis, as a woman in UP, do you accept? that things are better for women today in terms of law and order than they were 5 years ago not exactly uh, you just go through this latest uh, hijab row why this is happening in between these five uh, state assembly elections only just because bjp wants to change the narrative they just want to shift from the real issues they just want no, to no i divert. asked you a, i you asked you a question ma'am are women safer today are women feeling safer today than 5 years ago yes or no not at all especially in the regime of rashtriya swayam sevak sangh and bharatiya janata party it's very difficult whether for women or for dalit or for minorities it's very difficult to stay here in uttar pradesh or in all over because their ideology would support half of the women yes. what they are talking beti padhao and beti bachao and what exactly they are doing on the ground level it's yes. really quite crystal clear not as a women i am not saying this this is what we have hmm okay they are someone who brought the counter policy as a government policy not only hathras you just go through the national crime record bureau data it's quite clear their priority is not women they don't want to talk about their education they don't want to talk about phcs and phcs why don't you talk about the policies for women why don't you talk about health and roads and infrastructure so why always uh, again and again this love jihad then then change then okay. hijab okay let, uh, let let me let me give charu one final word because uh, as i said we want to avoid too many political tutu memes you know charu pragya if yogi adityanath stuck to This just If, if you if if yogi adityanath just stuck to said look give me a vote on law and order i believe i bet law and order but he brings in other elements from time to time he brings in the jina narrative don't say it was just a reaction the fact is do you want uh, uttar pradesh to be ruled by the followers of jina what kind of a statement is that it's blatant dog whistle communalism so when will you move away from that then why can't you just focus on your core agenda of law and order which should apply to all hindu women muslim women hindu men muslim men why time and again does the bjp or certainly mr adityanath in uh, western up he's brought in jinnah versus ganna you're on mute you're on mute ma'am my apologies 
So if anyone would listen to any of the speeches of our Chief Minister Yogi Ji, and if he speaks for an hour, he talks about development. He talks about work which has been done for people. Every single policy of our government is aimed at improving the lives of the poor, improving the lives. Okay, unfortunately. So, if ever asking which community, which caste, which religion you belong to before uh, getting the benefits of any policy, never. So, this is a government which believes in sabka saath, sabka vishwas, and um, we are working on that time and time again. If you meet people who have benefited from these policies, they will never tell you the government mm -hmm. asked for their religion first. But the point is that, of course, when a opposition leader, a ex chief minister, at that makes a comment of about Jinnah, admiring Jinnah, at a time of election. Elections in India, 75 years after independence, mm -hmm. it is a serious issue. Okay, and, let, uh, let, 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 Sharad, let Sharad, Sharad Pradhan, Sharad Pradhan is being in a, in a way questioned, Preeti questioned uh, his analysis of, you know, the woman voter. You want to quickly respond, make it a quick short response, Sharad. Really, really short, short uh, brief, uh, Rajdeep. I just want to point out that even when uh, Yogi Adityanath claims that he has transformed Uttar Pradesh into some kind of a Ram Raj and there is law and order is all, everything is hunky-dory. Mm. Mind you, the allegation is, the allegation about bad law and order earlier is once again laced with his communal undertones because the effort of the government has always been consistently to blame it all on Muslims as mm -hmm. if there were gundas were only Muslims and there were no Hindu gundas. Mm -hmm. That itself it's speaks the of the their party. entire, the it's whole party. campaign being resting essentially right. on communal divide. Okay, let you know. I'm, I'm going to do one last uh, look at our data dashboard because at the end of the day, elections are about hard data and how that data plays out in elections is critical. Uttar Pradesh, remember, going to the polls in this round, uh, first phase, and I'm going to break this down into districts now. Uh, some of those districts are very important in this phase of uh, Uttar Pradesh, phase one. There you have it. Uh, let's try and break down uh, the districts and the so-called swing seats and the bellwether seats in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, these are some of the seats. The BJP won 45 of the swing seats in Uttar Pradesh. Let's look closely at some of those districts uh, that will become important in this election. For example, Mathura, which was an RLD base. Now, if you look at Mathura city itself, the BJP won 57% of the vote. Congress is Pradeep Mathur, who's trying his luck against 17. Yogesh Kumar, 12. Look at the gap, a 40% gap. So, for the BJP to lose a seat like Mathura, you would need a 20% swing at the very minimum against it. That's the challenge, in a way, that the opposition has. Take a look at the more urban seats, Ghaziabad, for example, where, remember, uh, the, uh, the leader is... Okay, we'll try and bring you, uh, Ghaziabad. Now here again, look at the gap, 31%, BSP was second. So you've got a 31% gap. If you need a swing, you need a 20% swing here again. These are the kind of seats, the difficulties that the BJP is going to find in different places. Bulland share used to be at one time an area where the, uh, where the BSP would do very well. But remember what happened last time. Margin was 10%. So these are the kind of seats where the BSP must hope. But remember, the BSP-SP vote is divided. And there are those who believe that this was the election possibly for Mula, uh, for Akhilesh and Mayavati to tie up. Because if they tied up, they'd have a better chance. But these are the seats that particularly the BSP will look at very closely. Ha uh, very interesting, Hastinapur. Whoever wins Hastinapur, I'm told, wins Uttar Pradesh. Last time, interestingly, in Dholana, in, sorry, let's go to Hastinapur. Yes, I'm getting, I think my fingers are getting fatter by the day. Okay, that's an interesting seat. Dinesh Khatik won by 16% over the BSP. Whoever wins Hastinapur usually wins uh, 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 Uttar Pradesh. So, you've got a 16% lead for the BJP, the BSP at 29 and the SP at 22. Now, Assume that there was an alliance and they were able to directly transfer votes together, they'd have a better chance. The BJP is not just relying, therefore, on retaining its own vote bank. They're also relying on the fact that the opposition vote could get split. And that's an advantage that the BJP believes it has to some extent in this election. 
Rahul Srivastava, am I right in that analysis that it's not just about the BJP retaining that large 40% plus vote that it had across Western UP, but it's also Mayavati, who we've hardly discussed, who was once very strong in Western UP. She could take some of the votes that the SPRLD has. You've got the Congress trying to make an, uh, a dent, especially in certain pockets of Western UP, maybe get some vote share at least. You've got OAC also in some parts. A divided, fractured opposition means advantage BJP. Razdeep, if you look at Mayawati's track record, Mayawati gets something close to 65 to 70 percent of the jata votes in uh, UP. In this belt and others, this is where they are largely concentrated. She walks away with that vote. What is interesting, Razdeep, is that when we talk about this region, 30 percent, uh, 30 seats decided by less than 20 percent margin. Importantly, in all the seats where there was Muslim vote with Muslim domination, 30 percent and above, the BJP has not won, uh, the margin is victories less than 10 percent. Now, in that, what is very critical is that if there is a coming split in the JAT vote bank, which voted 91% in 2019 for the BJP, 77% in 2017 for the BJP, if that is a split, then the BJP uh, ha isn't a problem because there are a lot of seats which are decided by the narrow margin. I think the Mayawati element is critical and Rajiv, even Congress, Congress in last UP elections won 15% of the Muslim vote, hurting Samajwadi party more because it is more dependent on the Muslim vote and more Muslim vote does go to the Samajwadi party. And, and I think that's what makes the picture, the uh, split in the opposition makes the picture better for the BJP because BJP won the majority uh, votes of the uh, upper caste. I, it had a large number of non, non jatav non yadav OBCs, and also it had the benefit of having the Jats with it at that time. So a drift may hurt the BJP of the Jats, but then it creates a better equation right now only for SP and the RLD because they are consolidating vote, while the BSP only is left with the votes of the Jatavs. Okay, let's leave it there. Uh, what would Uttar Pradesh be without discussing caste arithmetic? Viewers often ask, why do we do it? But that is the reality on the ground that plays out in a state like UP. Shreya, sorry that we couldn't come to you. I hope you're... I, are the lines growing there in Agra, Shreya? Have the lines increased very quickly? Well, he... Well, yes, yes, the lines have indeed increased. Uh, you can see the line was uh, short, but it's now gone really long. People are voting in uh, large Where are numbers. the women? This is Agra South, uh, one of the urban areas. Uh, we don't see much women over here in this place. You know, unfortunately, right. it's the men who are dominating this particular booth. Right. Okay. Men dominating the booth, but not television screen. Someone just sent me a screenshot where we had two politicians, both women, and four of our reporters, all women. Uh, on the screen, which left just Rahul, Sharath and me in a minority. And that's the way it should be. We want more women and the day we can have more women discussing Uttar Pradesh, that's a good sign and a positive sign for uh, news television and for the country. On that note, keep watching India Today. Lots of data that we have for you. 58 seats, the battle for Uttar Pradesh, the war for the states has begun 2022. Thanks for watching this Thursday morning. The news and updates continue here on India Today. Have a good day. Stay well, stay safe. Bye for now.